Now we are going to follow our discussion of LSTM with an alternate architecture, GRU. Dalaram, tell us what GRU stands for. It stands for Gated Recurrent Unit. The recurrent piece we're familiar with at this point. Gated, it just refers to the concept that we have multiple gates that will modulate how information flows in and out. So let's look at how that mm -hmm. appears in the architecture again. Wow, that's an easy one to start with. Take it away from here. It's very different looking. Mm -hmm. So um, we tried to make the diagram similar to the last one for you guys to be able to see the, the main core differences. In the case of a GRU, we only have a hidden state again. So we're, we're throwing the cell state out of the window but we're keeping the, the, the whole like rail mechanism in place. And by that, I mean we have the hidden state from T minus 1 going into the cell and a, a, a hidden state at T coming out. And you, as you see, uh, we'll have multiple multiplications and additions which are, uh, gonna, which are um, uh, controlled by the inputs and the hidden state, and they're going uh, to impact what the final hidden state is going to be at the end. So now we can look at... What those, uh, uh, what those modulating mechanisms actually are. Yeah, and so we're going to actually see sort of a little more of a switching modulation, mm -hmm. basically. Mm -hmm. So let's look yeah. at that. So just to, again, start with uh, initial signals that we're going we're gonna to give them names. We're going to call this the reset gate, denoted with an R. So the re uh, it's very similar to what the stuff we did with the LSTM. We have your uh, we have the inputs down here and the uh, hidden state up here, and then they're going in and they're add being added up and uh, fed through a sigmoid, uh, which uh, works as a switch or continuous switch. So that's the first piece we have. So I I noticed that the H of t minus one goes down over here, mm -hmm. and it also goes in the middle. You can see it goes to another plus sign and then it, there's a part of the HT minus one that we can't see. So it's, it's heavily involved in the calculation all the way through. Mm -hmm. And there it is. There you can see that uh, we have the tannage and the input coming down, modulating, and let's see what happens here. So what we've got here is now that we have our reset, reset gate, R of T, uh, we want to create a hidden state candidate. We can kind of compare it to the cell state candidate that we had with the LSTMs. This time what's happening is you want to essentially, you want to multiply your uh, H of T minus 1 by some reset value uh, to, to, to make sure or to have control over how much H from the previous step is going to be fed in. So one piece that goes uh, in, in, into the H um, tilde of T that, um, that will give us the candidate about the H of T is that research gate multiplied by, uh, uh, that reset gate, sorry, um, uh, multiplied by uh, the hidden state from T minus 1, and then we apply a tan of H because we want an actual output at the end of this, which would be our hidden state. So uh, again, tan H between minus 1 and positive 1. So that's the first piece we have in order to come up with the, the, the hidden state candidate. So if I understand right, if we look at the argument of the tan H in the formula, it looks very similar except just a lin not only a linear combination of W times H of T minus 1, but that H of T minus 1 is hit by the R of T, the output of the reset gate, mm -hmm. which is really a continuous switch. Yeah. So a weighted continuous switch is added to the input to give us our candidate. That's correct, yes. Let's see what happens further. So another important thing we have is the update gate, which you can kind of think of as a replacement for the input and the forget gate. Um, the, the, in order to come up with the, so we're denoted with the Z of T, and in order to calculate it, again, we're sending in the hidden state from T minus one and uh, the input at times T. Uh, they go through a sigmoid, and that gives us the, uh, the Z of T that we're interested in. Uh, you, you'll see where the Z of T, as we'll go further, it splits into two branches. One branch uh, contributes to uh, uh, contributes to the candidate value that's going to help with the H of T uh, calculation, 
uh, and then another branch is fed into this block that says one minus and essentially going back to what you were saying in terms of weighted average calculations what it does is you know it determines how much information is is remembered or is uh, essentially taken in uh, from the new input and one minus that amount is going to be whatever we want to get rid of so hence the whole weighted average concept so I guess we can see all this in the next slide when it's all put together. Mm -hmm. So what's happening here is, as I said, so we still have the research uh, the reset gate. Uh, we have the um, H tilde, which is the uh, the candidate of the uh, the hidden state, which we just discussed. So that Z of t, which is the update value, is going to be multiplied by that hidden uh, state candidate, which will give us the, the, the new component of the hidden state, and then we also, which is this guy here, so uh, the, the new candidate times the, the update value, this is the new piece or the new term of the whole hidden state uh, computations, and we also have this other term, which is 1 minus z of t multiplied by the previous hidden state, and like schematically that would be uh, the, this guy here, 1 minus z of t, this little arrow here, multiplied by the hidden state that's coming in from previous step, and that's essentially the, the, the past component in our calculations, and you sum the past component and the present component together and then that will give you ultimately, you add them up and that will ultimately give you the hidden state of uh, the output of this uh, LSTM. So that point there uh, where we take the sigma and generate <coughs> the Z is key <coughs> for those two uh, modulations, the mm -hmm. time sign here, <coughs> excuse me, and the time sign there. Yeah. And uh, it's also good to point out that the GRUs, as we said, compared to LSTMs, they don't have the cell uh, state, so it, they're less. They have less parameters, so they might be easier to train. Uh, and there are more recent uh, uh, compared to LSTMs. LSTMs have been around in the literature for a couple decades now. Uh, GRUs are more recent, and people tend to try or they use both in their experiments when they actually want to learn from sequences. And um, depending on the application. There's no really consensus which one always works better than the other, but depending on the application, you may want to stick to one rather than the other. 